up everybody. Thanks again for joining me on another episode of In The Pink. And if you are not familiar with what that term means, that is a term that was coined way back in the 1500s before pink was even a color. And it had to do with wishing someone their optimum health and happiness. So this week we are gonna look at gut health and we're filling in that blank with Lyme disease. But first, we're always gonna start out with the what we know. So my first what we know. We know that in the United States, Lyme disease is the most common vector-borne illness with an estimated 300,000 cases annually. And my next what we know. We know that antibiotic treatment is the common course to treat Lyme disease and it is effective in almost 80% of the cases. But this remaining 10 to 20% of these patients develop another issue called post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. And it can be debilitating, causing chronic pain, causing fatigue, and even cognitive difficulties. And my last what we know, we know that this remnant of patients that develop this post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome have a distinct microbiome feature or signature associated with it. And this is what we want to look at today. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to the guts rule and all this. But first, we're going to back it up a little bit and just define what Lyme disease is. So this Lyme disease is a bacterial infection that is transmitted through deer ticks, the bite of a deer tick. And within just a few days, a rash usually develops around that bite. And this bacteria that's causing this problem is called Borrelia burgdorferi or Borrelia meyonii. The symptom profile initially starts with some pretty vague and common symptoms. So flu-like symptoms, fever, headache, body aches, some fatigue. But if this Lyme disease goes untreated or isn't treated promptly enough, that is when it can change from just these generalized symptoms to pretty severe symptoms. So cardiac palpitations, inflammatory issues of the brain and spinal column, even problems with the nervous system, like paralysis of facial muscles, memory issues, and even difficulty concentrating. It's kind of a big deal. All right, now let's move on to the guts roll and all this. So like we've already said, when this Borrelia enters the body, it wreaks havoc on our cells, on all our cells, because it's trying to gain nutrition to survive and thrive in our body being the host. This compromises our cellular function, including the cells in our gut microbiome. So the first area here we're gonna cover is stress. When Lyme disease gets in here, it's causing stress on our body. This is a recipe for GI dysfunction because when our cells are stressed, they're releasing chemical substances that activate our nerves. And then our nerves send these distress signals right up to our brain saying something is wrong here and that our resources need to be reallocated to fight off this infection. And that is taking energy away from routine things in our body like digestion. So this causes our GI system to slow down. GI motility slows down. Food passing through our system slows down. And you know where this is going because when we get that sluggish GI system, pathogens start to populate and overgrow in our gut. And what they do is they can cause this leaky gut. We get permeability in our gut lining. And treating Lyme disease with antibiotics is already compromising our gut microbiome. So it is obviously leaving us with a very compromised system, which leads us into the second one, the immune system. We already know that at least 80 to 90% of our immune system lies within our gut. And now we've got a compromised immune system. So we're setting ourselves up for more infectious issues as pathogens start to take over. So obviously it's really important that we're aware of this and can be proactive. And the next one, inflammation. Whenever we have something attacking our body, inflammation is the response. And when it's acute inflammation, not such a big deal. But when we get into this chronic inflammation picture, this is a big deal. So over time, this inflammation can even lead to autoimmune issues, all just caused by this little tick bite. 
And the last thing, the GI system, which we kind of touched on at the beginning because it's always circular in motion, isn't it? So uncomfortable GI symptoms, whether it be diarrhea, constipation, stomach pain, and even nausea. And having these types of symptoms also leads to other things like panic attacks or anorexia. Anxiety, it's all tied together. All right, so let's move on. Let's move on to a little case in point here. This was a study done back in 2020 at the John Hopkins Research Center. And this study all started to find out if there is a specific gut microbiome signature associated with patients that have Lyme disease. So they took that group, they also took a group of healthy individuals, and they also took a group of ICU patients to see distinctions between these three groups. And these results came in validating that yes, there is a distinct microbiome signature associated with these Lyme disease patients that was not all about the antibiotics because obviously the patients in the ICU also were on the antibiotics. And what they found is an increased prevalence of Blattia bacteria in these Lyme disease patients and a decrease in Bacteroides. Bacteroides is well known to help regulate digestion, keep inflammation at bay, help with immune response, and it even ties into GABA production, which has to do with our mood and our state of mind. All right, let's move on. Let's move on to some healthy practices. What are some things we can be doing on a daily basis to keep us in the pink? First and foremost, we always start with diet. And what this means is eating a wide variety of fruits and vegetables, whole foods, fibers, healthy sources of lean protein, fermented foods, and not only that, but cutting out the crap, cutting back on refined sugars and processed foods. The next one, exercise, moving your body. It's not only good for your body, it's good for your mind. And research is showing that exercise is leading to an abundance of healthy microbes, healthy bacteria that are living in our gut. Third thing, reducing stress. And I know, easier said than done, but we know that stress wreaks havoc on absolutely everything. So even adding adaptogenic herbs, so things like ashwagandha, can be really helpful in this arena. And the last thing, consider supplementation because we are not getting everything we need on a daily basis from our food sources, from our diets. Our food sources are not as nutrient dense as they were decades and generations ago. So supplementing with probiotic strains, lactobacillus, bifidobacterium, bacteroides, Saccharomyces boulardii. These are all common probiotics that are found in our gut microbiome that need to be there to keep things balanced and keep our body functioning properly. And this is going to lead me right into the best part. And if you wanna catch more about it, it is right here. All right, you guys, thanks for hanging with me till the very end. And if you are new to this Plexus train and have no idea what I am talking about, I'm gonna leave my link in that description box. Get on there, nose around, ask me some questions. Curiosity will get you on that train every time. I'm also gonna include video links that I've done in the past to some of those products that were covered in the other video link. And if you are new to this In The Pink series and you wanna catch some more episodes, that list will be right up here for you to sort through. And you might just want to join me here again next week because what happens in the gut does not stay in the gut. It affects everything, which is going to lead into many more episodes of In the Pink. <laughs>